In this video tutorial, I'm going to model countrywide above ground biomass density using the JDA Level 4A dataset and uh, the Planet NICV imagery. Uh, please take note that this uh, code is almost similar as uh, the one that I used for modeling countrywide forest canopy height. Therefore, I'm not, go, I'm not going to much details. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, uh, the, the canopy height video uh, link. Uh, so that uh, uh, you can uh, check it out if you have not uh, watched it. Right, so let's get uh, started. So first of all, uh, we are going to define uh, the country boundary or area of interest uh, using this uh, global uh, data set of uh, country boundaries. The next, we are going to load uh, the planet NICV uh, imagery uh, from uh, this asset, the Africa base map asset. And then uh, next we are going to filter uh, according to a specific uh, date range. Uh, here I have uh, I've filtered between uh, March and uh, May so that uh, I, I, I focus on the peak uh, vegetation period in Zimbabwe. Right then next uh, we are going to uh, calculate uh, NDVI uh, to, to get an idea of the, the, the vegetation uh, uh, health in the uh, in the study area between uh, this period and then uh, following that uh, we are going to uh, create a composite that combines uh, uh, the planet uh, NICV image and the NDVI so this is what we are going to use uh, uh, for modeling above ground biomass right then uh, after that we are going just to display the imagery, the planet NICV imagery, and uh, the NDVI uh, image. Uh, following that, we are going to load uh, the JDA Level 4A data set. Uh, so, this uh, data set is at uh, 25 meter uh, resolution. Uh, this is a raster data set. So, we are going first to define the quality mask. So the quality mask con uh, consists of, uh, the, uh, of, of the quality uh, flag and uh, the degrade flag. So this is uh, uh, going to remove uh, low quality uh, data points uh, from the uh, JEDI uh, level 4A data set. And then next uh, we are going to uh, calculate uh, the relative uh, standard error. So we are going to uh, do this. It's quite simple. We are just going to divide the above ground biomass uh, uh, standard error uh, by the above ground uh, biomass density measurement. So uh, these two metrics, they come uh, with the JDI uh, level 4A data set. Okay, so we are just uh, deriving this from the JDI level 4A data set. Right, so uh, what is uh, the standard error? So standard error tells us how much uh, the above ground biomass measurement varies uh, from the true value. Okay, so this is uh, based on the, the measurements that they've done uh, f from the actual food work and uh, the measurement that they've done from uh, the JDA uh, uh, sensor, okay, from the JDA LIDAR sensor. Right, so uh, why do we need this? Uh, because uh, the standard error it represents the variability or the uncertainty of uh, uh, the estimate. So it's important we know that. And uh, why are we calculating the relative standard error? Because here the relative standard error expresses uh, the uncertainty as a percentage of uh, the uh, measure of the measurement value. Okay, as a uh, as a percentage of the above ground biomass uh, density. Right, so this is, is, is important because it helps us understand how much confidence uh, we have in the measurement. So again, it's, a, it's just a way of uh, uh, making sure that we get uh, uh, the JDA uh, values uh, that have got a low uncertainty. Right, so th that's the whole point. Right, next again, we are going to uh, prepare a slope mask. So the slope mask is... Uh, defined as uh, just is going to get uh, uh, it's going to keep uh, 
the data for the areas with slopes less than uh, 30 degrees okay so remember if uh, we get uh, points uh, from slopes above 30 degrees then some of uh, these points and uh, they're not quite good okay right then uh, next uh, we define a function okay, for processing the uh, the jedi data so uh, we are going to uh, take in uh, the uh, the data period range so the start year is uh, in uh, 2022 okay and uh, the end year is uh, in uh, march uh, march uh, the end of march 2023 okay uh, Please take note, we stop in March here because uh, the, the JDA, as I've said, uh, in the uh, forest canopy height uh, modeling uh, video, the JDA was uh, retired in uh, 2023. Okay, so that's why we have this uh, cutoff uh, period. And uh, next we are going to filter the points according to this uh, boundary. And then uh, later, uh, we are also going to define the quality masks and uh, the error mask. So this error mask is uh, the standard error. And then we have the stop mask, uh, which uh, we have defined uh, uh, before, saying that we want uh, to get points uh, that falls in stops less than uh, 30 degrees. Okay, then uh, next uh, we visualize uh, these points. Uh, after that, uh, we will now want to sample uh, JDA level 4A data points okay, from the JDA mosaic. So remember, this uh, mosaic is in a raster format. So now we need uh, to get points that we are going to use uh, for our random forest model. Okay, and I've uh, defined here as uh, 50, the scale to be 50. So again, we said this is uh, the spatial resolution okay, that we are going to do the sampling. Okay, so here it's a, it's a little bit finer. Okay, so this is 50 uh, because I, I want to get uh, better results for the modeling, at least try to improve the result. Right, and again, uh, important here is I've uh, defined uh, the data ranges to be between zero uh, megagrams per hectare to 90 megagrams per hectare. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the highest uh, okay, amount of uh, above ground biomass uh, uh, typical in the Miombo woodlands and other forest areas of uh, Zimbabwe. So if we, uh, you are selecting another country, please make sure that uh, you change this value. Okay, make sure you change this uh, value. So this is values from some uh, studies uh, that I've uh, consulted. But for your study area, you have to change this value because uh, the above ground biomass uh, varies from uh, uh, place to place. Right, then next, we are going to uh, use the SR World uh, uh, Land Cover data set in order to mask uh, uh, the, uh, the land cover types of uh, interest. So here we, we just want to have... Uh, the land cover uh, types of uh, tree cover and uh, shrubland uh, for the model. So we are just modeling above ground biomass uh, for the tree cover and shrubland. All right, then after that we can uh, update uh, the our NICFI uh, uh, image composite uh, with the land mask so that we mask all the areas. Okay, and then from there we are going to now to uh, make sure that our points uh, fall on these uh, selected uh, areas that we have uh, masked. And then uh, we do the filtering, again focusing on the tree cover and uh, the shrubland. Uh, following that, uh, we are going to, to create uh, uh, the training and uh, test samples. Okay, so 70% of... Uh, the data points are going to be used for training the model, for training the random forest model. And while 30% of uh, the points are going to be used for uh, checking uh, the accuracy of uh, the model. Okay. Right. Next, we define the 
the response uh, variables and uh, the predictor variables. So here for the predictor variables, we have a band, uh, the blue band, green band, red band, uh, the near infrared band, and uh, NDVI. And uh, for the response variable, here uh, we have uh, above ground biomass density, okay, which is our target. Right next to we define the random forest model. Okay, so we are going to, uh, to use 50 trees. Uh, you can uh, change here the number of trees. And uh, the output of uh, this uh, model is a regression since we are estimating above ground biomass uh, density. Right, uh, next uh, we do the prediction. We are simply taking this uh, must uh, nickify image. Uh, remember, it is only taking uh, into consideration uh, the tree cover and shrub lens. And then we are going to take in our bands, okay, the predictor variables, and uh, the model, the random forest model. And then we are going to create our prediction. Uh, next, uh, we are going to use uh, this uh, package uh, with a palette uh, th that uh, we want to define uh, for our legend, okay, for our color legend. And uh, here we are simply going to take the minimum value for the legend from the prediction, and we are going to take the maximum value uh, for the legend uh, from the from the predicted uh, uh, above ground biomass values. And then uh, next we just uh, add uh, the, the, the above ground biomass uh, map that we have predicted uh, according to, this, uh, to the, uh, the palette that we have created. And uh, this uh, next chunk of code is just for the legend. So this is uh, creating the items for the legend and uh, their position and the measurements. Okay, so this is like uh, the title of the uh, legend. Uh, so it's a uh, mean above ground biomass density. Uh, then uh, the, yeah, the measurement unit here is a uh, megagrams per hectare. Right, uh, then after that uh, we are going to uh, uh, check the accuracy of the model uh, so here we are going to uh, uh, compute uh, the RM RMSE and uh, R squared uh, matrix. Okay. And then after that, uh, we are just simply going to uh, export uh, the above ground biomass uh, uh, map for the tree cover and the shrubland uh, to uh, uh, Google Earth Engine Asset. Uh, you can export to Google Drive, but uh, uh, this is quite a, a, a big map. Uh, this is at 5 meter uh, special resolution. So it's quite a, a huge uh, data set. So it's going to take a lot of time. And uh, it will take a lot of time for you to uh, download uh, the data set. So if you save it in asset, uh, you can always uh, retrieve it and do your analysis uh, further. Right, so these are the results from the uh, running the, the, the model. So uh, the RMS is uh, 18, uh, which is a, a bit high. And uh, the R squared is uh, 0 0.1, which is also very, very low. It's quite uh, low. But uh, please take note, uh, this is a, a modeling for the whole country. So if we want to improve, maybe it's better to uh, model uh, uh, for the smaller area, maybe the the, the provincial scale or district uh, or district scale, or for a particular uh, forest reserve area. But uh, we just want to get an idea for how we can do this and uh, for the whole country. Okay, so this is uh, the, the result. And uh, let me just uh, uncheck some of so that you can get an idea. of uh, the final map. So we can see that here the 
above ground biomass uh, ranges uh, between uh, 7 to about uh, 7 to 3 uh, megagrams per hectare, which is uh, more or less uh, uh, the the quantity of uh, above ground biomass that we expect uh, uh, in uh, Zimbabwe. But uh, if we zoom in a bit, we can uh, check, for example, this area of Ngao, it's, uh, it's one of the forest reserve area. So let's check. Okay, it's coming out. Yes, so in this kind of areas, we expect uh, uh, to have uh, above ground biomass around uh, 50 uh, megagrams per hectare, or so 60, at least between 40 to 60. Uh, we can uh, inspect, sorry, we can inspect uh, this to check. And let's see the result. Mm, okay. Well, oh, this is around the, this is 29 megagrams per hectare. Uh, so it's quite low in, in this area. How about this area? Oh, yeah, we have around uh, 41 uh, megagrams per hectare. So more or less of what would they uh, expect. Right, so this is uh, the res result uh, of uh, the modeling of above ground biomass. So thank you very much uh, for watching uh, this uh, video. Uh, please don't forget uh, to subscribe so that you get notification uh, if you have a new uh, tutorial. See you in the next one.